Okay, you guys, imagine this scenario. You are making dinner, you turn on the news and it's like, oh my gosh, go buy extra flashlights, extra batteries, water, canned food, huge snowstorm is coming. We don't know how long we're gonna be locked inside. It's gonna be crazy. Meanwhile, you go on social media and you see your aunt or your cousin and they're taking a selfie by a pool, drinking a margarita, or they are out golfing or at a spring training game. And you are just like, why am I not living in the greater Phoenix area? For joining me, I'm Andrea Sheppy, a 41 year old Phoenix native and a full time realtor out here in the beautiful greater Phoenix area. Let's start with item number one, and that is our weather. Okay. Can't shovel sunshine, right? So, yes, we can get hot in the summer. You know, July and August are usually the worst. September, you get excited, but it still sucks. I'm not going to lie. It, it is still very hot. Okay. We have had some record breaking years, but we still go, we still do things right. When you have a bunch of days in a row over 110 or over 115, which is still more rare, but it did happen in the last year. But basically you just make sure your AC is tuned up. Okay. AC companies are a dime a dozen out here. Same with pool companies. They will compete for your business. When you do buy a home out here, you just make sure that your AC unit is in great shape. It will cool you down all summer long. And then you just make sure you have a pool or access to a pool, right? Sometimes you get out of the pool in July and you might have even misters going and suddenly you're a little chilly. I know it sounds crazy. There's a little bit of a breeze in the evening and it's so beautiful. So it really is not as bad as it sounds. But when you do go grocery shopping or go to see a movie, you will have a little card again because everyone blasts the AC here and makes it so chilly because it's hot it's outside. It's a dry heat. I know people make fun of that, but you don't walk outside like you're in Florida and get hit with that humidity and you're just sweating and you're like, why am I here? Right? So we don't have that. Also in the summer is our monsoon season. And that is obviously part of our weather. We get our haboobs and all of that is actually really beautiful. And that does cool us down usually to the 70s or 80s as well. So that does help take away the heat from the summer. But a lot of people acclimate. If you go to Camelback Mountain, one of our most popular hiking trails in Paradise Valley, you will see people of all ages, all times of the year. And they're hiking up at 5 a.m. when it's 100 out and they're fine. You just bring your Camelback, extra water. Now, I will say the one thing every year that happens is people get rescued off the mountains because they go hiking in July without water, not being aware of how dehydrated you can get. Here's so our big story, a busy and dangerous day for rescuers on valley hiking trails. This morning alone, Phoenix fire crews were called out to help with four different rescues. Definitely in that case, always make sure you have a local with you or get guidance when you are doing any kind of outdoor activity here in the summer because it can get hot. But you know what? Our entertainment doesn't stop. There is bars, there's restaurants, everyone has Mr. Switch that. In October, November, December, all the way through May, we're very pleasant, okay? It's breezy and, you know, we're anywhere from the 80s to about like the 60s for the highs. And then the nights can be in the 30s, it's a little more rare though. And then usually up into the 60s, depending on the time of year. Now coming with all that great weather, we get car shows like Barrett Jackson. We get golf tournaments like the Open, which I'm sure you all heard. It's on the news every year. This year, it was definitely... <laughs> this year, they had some issues because we actually got a bunch of rain, um... Anyhow, that's a whole nother video, but it is actually a very fun, very enjoyable event. We have outdoor concerts. We have spring training. You guys, we have everything. January through March, every weekend there's something. It's amazing spring break. That's why people feel like they are living a year-round spring break when they're out here, okay? So our winters are just so, so wonderful. That is our weather. We do get 300 days of sunshine every year. And it's just, it's so nice to have sun, even when it's hot, right? You need your vitamin D. It's supposed to be on your stomach from what I've heard. And it really does make people happy. I do have friends that live in Seattle and Portland and Vancouver and a friend from upstate New York. And they used to have to go to tanning booths or get the lighting in their home to fight off seasonal depression because it was so overcast and cold and the sun was gone all the time. So we don't have that problem here. You will be full of sunshine if you live here. In my opinion, it is a very, very delightful thing. And the weather is not, is really not right, too you guys, bad. Item number two, 
the pro and con of living in Phoenix is going to be our public transportation. So we do have public transportation. We have our light rail. We have our streetcar in Tempe. We have bus systems. Okay. We have a lot of Waymo cars. Yeah. We do have it. However, it doesn't go very far. So if you're working in Surprise and you live in downtown Phoenix, you're going to have to take a bus probably. It really doesn't get you from one side of the city to the other. And not only that, but it's run well, but it's not always the safest um, way to get around. There is crime on our light rail and on our buses. And therefore, a lot of people just prefer to use their car. Okay. So especially when it's hot, you're going to want your own air conditioning. Um, you know, when people are sweaty and stuff, you're probably going to want your own car. So the pro would be we do have public transportation. You don't have to have a car. There are plenty of people that bike places as well. But a lot of people who come from bigger cities like Chicago and New York and stuff like that, they're just used to a much more efficient public transportation system. And we just aren't there yet. So that is reason number two. By the way, you guys, I am Andrea Sheppy, a Phoenix native, all 41 years. I am born here, from here. I've lived, worked, and played all over the valley. I am also a full-time real estate agent with HomeSmart Elite. If you're thinking of moving here and you're looking for an expert in the Phoenix real estate scene, I would love to help you. So definitely reach out to me anytime. Hey guys, reason number three why people love and hate living in Phoenix. So one is going to be our housing market, our Phoenix, Arizona real estate so, market. And this is more recent. We used to be an affordable city, but now we are the fifth largest city in the nation. Our housing prices have definitely gone up in the last few years, along with everywhere else. Our income levels have gone up, but not at the rate of where the housing market is. And so in that sense, though, we do have a lot of people moving here from out of state and they're working remotely and we're very affordable for them. However, the people that are locals are having a hard time affording just a basic house because maybe they are from here and they've worked here for a long time and, you know, wherever they're working at they haven't gotten the raise in their pay to afford our home. So that is kind of the complaint is that people don't make enough money to afford our cost of housing. But then the pro is if you're coming from somewhere else, we are still very affordable for a big hey, you guys, city. Reason so number four, <laughs> reason number four, why people love and hate living in Phoenix is our access to the outdoors and to wildlife. So we are very lucky. We have so many beautiful places where you can experience nature and literally be one with nature, right? You can you can golf and you can hike and you're just a short drive away from, from lakes and from kayaking or hanging with wild horses and just being very zen. And a lot of people really, really appreciate that sense of outdoor and just like the energy that comes with it, okay? Your backyard can literally back up to a mountain. You can just roll over your back fence jump on your, your dirt bike or, you know, put on your great hiking shoes and take off. Right. And I have a lot of clients and friends that that is how they live. And it's just absolutely breathtaking. Okay. But on the other side, you do have to deal with coyotes, birds of prey, scorpions, snakes. Now I will say rattlesnakes typically come out at sunset and uh, sunrise. Okay. So that's when you want to be careful when you're out hiking and snakes are more rare in your house. You will see scorpions though, but you just get sprayed, okay? Like bug spray companies, again, dime a dozen out here. There's a ton of them. So you can get the pest taken care of. You just have to be educated on it, okay? So um, now there are birds of prey that have come down and swooped up and taken chihuahuas or dachshunds and they have taken people's pets, cats, things like that. So you do have to be aware of that. But on the other hand, you can sit in your backyard and see a cardinal or a bald eagle or something or owls. We have owls that nest here and it's just so beautiful. So there really is pros and cons to being one with nature. Some people absolutely live for it and some people really just can't take it. They get so nervous and it's just not the right fit for them and that's okay. So that is reason number four, people love and hate living in Phoenix. Hey, you guys, reason number five, the last reason on today's list that people love about living but also hate about living in Phoenix is our close proximity to other cities. So I don't think a lot of people realize that Phoenix is the center, right? And around that, we have all of our suburbs and we are so close to them. Everything's connected. You don't even know when you're in another city. And so that makes everything really attainable, right? If you are working in Scottsdale and you can't afford to live there, 
you're really not too, too far if you're living in the Southeast Valley or South Phoenix, and you can still live in an affordable area and get to work, right? And our freeway system is on a grid, so it makes it so easy to get around, and we keep adding more. And I just was reading over our plans for all of the new infrastructure that's coming, and we are just really up on making sure our freeways and our highways are very well connected and just really make it an easy way to live and get around the valley, okay? We're also just a short flight away, okay? Sky Harbor, so Southwest technically doesn't have hubs, but but Phoenix is definitely a major port for them. And Southwest goes everywhere, okay? You can get to LA, you can get to Vegas, you can get to Mexico, you can get to New York, Chicago. But we are in, Sky Harbor is an international airport and you can really get anywhere pretty much any day of the week. So we are very accessible as far as being very close in proximity to other cities. Four hours to Rocky Point to get to the beach, six hours to San Diego, and that's driving. So really is a very simple way. Now, on the other hand, people don't love that because that means we get a lot of visitors, right? So we get a lot of winter visitors. We get a lot of people that come out here just for season because we're so accessible. So, you know, a lot of people don't like the tourist season. They don't like when we're really busy, when we host events like the Super Bowl last year, Final Four this year, okay? We always have events going on here. And so sometimes people just aren't really into All right, that. you guys. As you can see, I'm an Arizona girl. <laughs> anyway, thank you for joining me on this pros and cons of living in Phoenix, Arizona. I would be more than happy to answer any questions you have about Phoenix or the Phoenix real estate market. If you're thinking of buying or selling or relocating here, I do a ton of relocations from YouTube, especially, and you're all so amazing and I'm really grateful. So definitely reach out to me. And if you found this video useful, please like, subscribe, share, comment. Don't forget to go to my link tree, link in bio for all of my free guides. And you can contact me there as well. Anyhow, thank you guys so much. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you guys on my next video. Thank you.